All right, so what is going on, guys? It is Movie FX with its first kind of official video. Uh, sorry if this video is bad. I'm trading on a PC right now, and I don't really have like audio equipment or anything. I'm just kind of doing this on the fly. But I just wanted to show you guys this account that I just passed in the phase one of the My Forex Funds Challenge. I'm going to be showing you guys the trades that I took. I'm going to be showing you guys the setups on TradingView. Uh, I posted the last couple of trades for the most part, the trades that I took. Um, I'm not sure if I posted all my trades, but I saved most of my trades so I can back test and look at the review over the weekend. And I'm going to show you guys right now pretty much how I did it, how I think you guys should do it. And I'm going to give you tips that probably a lot of people aren't going to tell you because they probably haven't went through as many accounts or kind of have the experience maybe. Um, maybe they passed, but they don't really have a set plan or set experience on which way is kind of better. So I'm going to give you my personal experience and kind of help you guys on that. So let's get into it. So and I'm sorry if the audio is bad right now. Like I said, I'm just using basic computer audio right now. So passing 10 days, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, not that much drawdown either. Most drawdown I've seen in general was 2% drawdown, a little bit over 2%, like 2.1% drawdown type of thing. So really good on that end. Um, starting risk was 0.6%. So I started to risk $300. And I thought that I was just going to risk $300. Uh, for the challenge phase one, and just kind of do that, take one, two trades a day, seeking to new accession, and um, looking for high probability setups with the trend. I will take a counter trend trade if it gives me a one or two risk reward or greater. And that's pretty much the kind of setups and risk rewards and kind of like what I was going for. And I was kind of just kind of like going with the flow with that. And pretty much just saying, okay, well, I'm going to fill this out. Um, it ended up doing okay for the first part. Um, couldn't really complain. Didn't really see that much drawdown. Um, and my main thing is this. I didn't want to see that much drawdown in the beginning. But the thing is this. When you're taking the phase one of the challenge, you have 30 days, right? And on top of that, your psychology is everything. So you don't really want to be passing in like the third or fourth week. So for me, it's like I want to pass within the first 10 days or have the ability to with my risk management and everything. It at least gives me that ability to pass in the first two weeks. Now, if I don't, that's up to just my just the trades I took at that time. But for the most part, I want to have a risk management plan that at least allows me to kind to pass. So I have one mission on the evaluation step one, and that's to get it done as quickly as possible, efficiently, efficiently as possible, and in an appropriate manner with proper risk management. And that's pretty much it. You're not really looking to trade the phase one challenge and like trade it like you will on the live account, or even the verification, right? And the reason why is because you have 30 days. It's not like you're trading your own account. When you're on your own account, a lot of things aren't affecting you. Your mental is not being affected. Uh, you're not being pressured. There's a lot of things that go into you trading these big accounts, especially if you know you maybe you don't come from money. Like maybe you're poor, or maybe you don't come from a big background. So you put all that emotion on this account to work out, right? When you do that, it puts so much pressure. On top of that, you probably may have a a, a really smart risk management plan. Maybe it's right and as good as appropriate, but for the phase one, it's not good enough. So. I'm gonna tell you guys A to Z, pretty much how I do it. If I'm all over the place on this video, please forgive me. Um, this is kind of on the fly. I don't have anything written down. I'm just kind of just showing you guys real quickly. I just passed this account like yesterday, I believe. So I just wanna show you guys exactly how I did it. And um, so yeah, so starting off, I was risking about $300, which is about 0.6% of the account, right? And that pretty much got me to about upwards of 4% profit, right? But the thing is, you know, I ended up having a, once I was up 2%, I ended up having a dip and that was like my first drawdown, right? And I ended up losing about 2% of the account and um, ended up getting the account back up. I ended up getting the account back up. And um, from there, just kind of just got the account up 2%, you no, know, actually 4%. And then it kind of just took a dip again. And then that's when I got down to 4%. I mean, that, that's when I got back down to 2%. And I revalued my whole plan. I was like, all right, I'm two weeks in on this account. How exactly should I go about this? I know that from experience that you want to get done with it in an efficient manner. You don't want to be trading these accounts for very long time in the phase one. You start to get pressured. You start to feel like you want to over leverage and risk more. And it starts to tap in, right? So for me, I like to risk 1%. When it comes to the challenge phase one, it's 1%. Now, when it comes to the phase two and it comes to trading on a live account, I risk half percent upwards up to 5%. So basically is this. I'm going to show you guys this right here. So pretty much these are my trading rules. I have three sets of rules for three different sets on the market. Psychology rules. I have GJ rules because that's the pair that I focus on the trade. 
And then I had this like my risk management plan for how much risk we put a trade. So I'm risking 1% on the step one challenge, right? Because you want to get done with that step one challenge as fast as possible, taking the higher probability setups, one to two risk rewards or above, nothing less. And you don't want to be, you know, taking these scalps and this and that if you're not a scalper. You want to stick to how you trade. You want to wait for the best quality setups, candlestick confirmations, whatever your strategy is, you go for those A quality setups, nothing more, nothing less, right? So that's what I'm focusing on. And for the step two of the challenge in the funded account, I risk 0.5%. Now here's the thing, I can risk 0.5% for the entire duration of the account, or I can increase my risk up to 1%. And, and when I reach 5% profit in the account, that way, once I risk my account for 5%, that gives me the ability to risk 1% without thinking, okay, I'm gonna be losing $500 in one trade and I don't wanna be down you know, this amount amount because you only are allowed 12% drawdown. This isn't a real, fully back, you know, 50K account, right? So you only allowed six, uh, $6,000 in drawdown. So you want to be trading profit, you're only risking the profit and you're risking 1%. This is in my opinion. It's all about risk management. It's all about, it's all about longevity of the account, right? So you want to have the account in profit before you start to risk 1%. And in my opinion, when you're doing the step two of the challenge, there's no need to risk 1%. Just risk half percent or $300, whatever the drawdown is, divide that by 20, and that's how much you're risking. So if you're on FTMO, divide how much you're allowed to lose in your account, and you divide that by 20. You take one to two trades per session. If you take, and I don't trade Asian. Asian, I, I feel like no one should be trading Asian, honestly, unless you're like, you know, have some sort of like risk management or something planned that's based off Asian session, but for the most part, it's a consolidation session. So if you're trading Forex pairs specifically, there's no reason why you're trading it. If you trade US30, there's definitely no reason why because US30 is an indicing with the stock market pair. You only trading at 9.30 in the morning from your session in. There's no need to be trading an Asian session like that. There's no volume, no one's trading at that time. So if you're trading London session and you're trading your session, you want to be taking one or two trades per session, right? So if you lose the first trade, you can try again. Now, if you lose both trades, you're done. You lost 1% on that on that session, call it quits. Now, if you want to get back up around 1 a.m. and try that again, same thing. One or two trades per session. And now all these trades are risk rewards. One or two risk rewards are greater. You want to be looking for a high quality setup, mainly with the trend for the most part. There's no reason why you should be taking counter trend trades when you're trying to pass the challenge. So you want to be sticking to that sort of like flow, right? That sort of flow in the account. Right, and you want to be doing it as well for the for the funded account as well. Now you can increase your risk to one percent, in my opinion, unless you're, you're up three to five percent. You don't have to be up so much in the account, but give yourself wiggle room, even one percent. Give yourself something to where it's like, okay, I'm up five hundred dollars. I'm risking one percent of that. Therefore, you're risk free. If anything happens on that trade, you don't feel like ah, like I just lost this amount of amount. Right. Now, when you're in drawdown, this is vital for 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 not necessarily the, for the step one of the challenge because you, know, you just want to get that account you know, out the way. You know? So it's okay to deal with drawdown when you're, when you're in the challenge for risking 1%. But for the, for the step two and for the funded, my personal opinion, always risk half percent when you're in drawdown. This is vital. This is very, very important. The reason why is because you want this account to last. You want to give yourself enough trades to get yourself out of a pickle. If you allow yourself only 10 trades to get yourself out and you have a person who only has a 40 to 60 percent win rate, which is the majority of traders, you may end up losing the account from two different reasons why. Yes, you may be able to, to get yourself out with a 40 percent win rate, which is 1 percent. But if you find yourself getting emotional, going against your rules, you may end up risking 2 percent on a trade. You may, you may end up risking 2 percent, right? So in my opinion, slow down it's all about longevity it's all about sustainability you want to sustain the account you gotta remember you're a successful forest trader and you're looking for high probability setups and you look for sustainability you're not looking to be profitable this week or this and that I mean, you're looking to see your results over this month so even if you have a dead month per se if you're able to sustain the account for that month and get back to break even maybe you have a deep drawdown but you're risking half a cent and fight your way back in right that's okay because you still have your account. The person who wins, keeps the account is the, is the trader who actually wins. 90% of the traders lose their account in 90 trades and within 90 days. So if you're a person who is able to get themselves out of a pickle, you're part of that 10%, man. Like, honestly, you're part of that 10%. So you got to remember that. Um, 
my DJ roles. You can kind of use this same thing. I know a lot of people who trade DJ. Like, um, a lot of people like Daniel Savage and stuff like that. They stick to DJ and stuff. And personally, I like DJ. And um, I trade with the trend, man. Like, I do kind of some trades as well, but for the most part, it's trading with the trend. Um, and when you take counter trend trades, you know that it's a counter trend trade. Don't sell the market at a resistance point and just be like, okay, I'm looking for a one to five. That's just retarded, you know? Um, so, but make sure it's a one to three forward or above, or it's just pointless to take that trade because, you know, if, you, if you're not actually a scalper and you're not actually a person who's looking for one to one and you're just taking one to one trades, you're going to be hurting yourself because you're making it that much harder to actually pass. Okay, so find the trend, right? So first thing I like to do is I like to look for the trend. I want to see what exactly is going on. If we're in an uptrend, cool, great. We're in an uptrend. Now I can go look for buy setups. That's the first thing you want to do. It takes two seconds. Look what the trend is. If we're in an uptrend in the daily time from weekly time frame, do your top down analysis. Look, we're in an uptrend. Great. I got that out the way. So now I'm looking for high probability setups in an uptrend. I may take downtrend trades, but I now know that given it's in the uptrend, I need to keep it quick. I don't need to do this, this setup looking for this mass of this world, right? See which way price is breaking out of consolidation if you're trading London, if you're trading DJ. So if you see that price is breaking out of London, you know, and this is a quick tip, right? So I'm going to show you my trading view and I'm going to show you the charts pretty much in GJ and I'm going to have my sessions on. So just to give you a quick rundown, my sessions are from New York session. I'm in New York right now. So 3 a.m. is 3 a.m. New York time. Now, from 3 a.m. to 8 a.m. is kind of like the pivotal point of my session. And I'm pretty much looking at, right, what Asian is doing. Because every session has a drop. Asian session is consolidating. London session could be a breakout, right? Breaking out of the Asian consolidation, right? And this is what you see. All this consolidation, right? You see the market playing out like this. As soon as the market gets to around 3 a.m., look what price does. It breaks out the market. So... It breaks out of this Asian consolidation and hits his major support zone, right? What you see, rejection. You see another rejection, right? So this is a, a key level on top of that. Along the daily time frame, right? We we now know in GJ that this is a very strong key level. Right? We're in an uptrend. So now I know that okay, price is rejecting off this zone. I mean, we're not an uptrend, we're on a key level in the daily time frame very strong level if you look at the chart and you understand zone you understand that how powerful the daily time from weekly time from zone that where we were at on gj on top of that candlestick confirmation understanding your candlestick bias what does every candle mean what do you see here you see a pin bar very strong rejection pin bar right so that's telling me one thing that price wants to go up price wants to reject price wants to push so what i'm going to be doing is if I do take sales, keep them quick. And if I do take buys, hold them out, right? So this is exactly what I did. If you look at this trade right here, I seen where price was going. I seen a, a high probability setup for price to push down. And as you can see here, if you see in the RSI that price is trading below the 50, that means that it's in a minor time frame downtrend or a higher time frame downtrend. It means that price is trading lower lows and lower highs. This is on the five minute. So I use divergence and I use the RSI to kind of see what, what is the trend going on. Even if it's a modern time frame trend, I can I can do something out of that, right? And I wanted to take one or two years towards a better. So I see a sell right here. I'm like, okay, cool, great. I see a sell. I take this sell. What do I look for? Just on the support level. Boom. It gives me that trade. Trading below the 50 S and the five minute, and I enter on that level. Candlestick confirmations. What are you looking for? Break and retest of this zone, right? I have three confirmations. Trading below the 50 S and we're trading in a minor time frame downtrend, right? Down to the major zone of support, my, uh, minor time frame downtrend on the five minute. We're trading below 50 SMA, break and retest of this zone. And that's all I need. Take this trade, whatever happens, whatever happens. Risk management, 1% risk on that trade. Ended up making a little bit, uh, this is a one or two risk reward. Ended up making around like $900 on the trade. Uh, closed a little bit early. So, well, took that trade as well. Once I seen that price was at that zone, I didn't just buy the market. I wanted to wait for price to break monitor time frame structure. That is important. If you see that price is in the uptrend, but the monitor time frame structure, if it's creating a high low or a rejection point isn't complete, it's too early because we don't have no confirmation that price is ready to go up yet. As you can see here, price broke structure. 
It broke structural the amount of time frame and created a new high, which means that price is ready to go up. I know that because of the daily time frame. I know that overall, we're looking to create these buys. Look what's happening when the, when the hour. Look at all the stuff that's happening on GJ, right? So I know that Asian consolidation breakout, the Asian breakout is over. Price pushed down right before London session. The London session volatility of the opening pushed it down, gave you that entry. I took the sales, maximized my profit on that sale. As soon as price gave me an entry, right, and broke structure right here, I entered, marked up my fibs, marked it up from the previous high, right here um and you know everyone trades their everyone marks other fish differently so mark it up from here to here price broke above gave gave me the 50 percent entry pullback entered right here entry stop loss and i ended up closing out right here at the zone um and pretty much secured on that and this is this trade right here you know pretty much price mark it up from this previous high to here to here Waited for price to get in here, price into the entry, and look what happens. Price flies, right? And this is why it's important to do your top down analysis. This is why it's important to wait for confirmations, look for confluences. You're trying to pass the account, creating high probability setups. That is extremely important. You don't want to be taking setups that don't make sense. So, as price gave me all this, I'm risking 1%. These are the type of setups you want to be taking when you're trading on, a, when you're trying to pass the challenge. Take your time. Practice. If you're not at that level yet to take these type of setups and identify them in real time, don't try to take the challenge. Take your time. Practice these things, right? So I ended up making about um, four percent, I believe, in this trade. About four percent, and this pretty much finished it off right here during the next session. Um, price broke above. If you look right here, super simple stuff, man. If you want the hourly, what did price do? Right, uh, right here. Break and retail to this zone. Bright price broke the structure, push down, create a higher low. It's it's simple stuff, man. I mean, once you see price break this new zone right here, right? Look at this whole thing. I mean, it's it's I don't even have to talk about it. Man. You guys already know. Price broke above, entry is right here, and I pretty much marked my first from this previous high, from this previous lower high to this previous higher high. And entered right here. I had confluences. Price broke, it had three confluences, right? I think probably four actually. No, yeah. Price is above the 50 on RSI, which is showing you uptrend, right? Price broke above previous structure. Look at it. Look at these lower highs that are completely broken. Completely broken, which is inconfluence with the higher time frames. Higher time frames are telling me buys and the minor time frames that are broken with buyer confluence. That's major, major key uh, pointers that price wants to push up. The reason why I had a very tight stop loss. Um, uh, price broke above this zone. Break and retail this structure, right? And look what happens. Simple, like super simple trades. This was like a one to five trade right here. This is enough for me to pass. Before that, um, it was a little rocky, you know, a little rocky on GJ. But those are the major trades that I took to pass. I ended up making 3,600 that day that was uh, on a Wednesday. So that was about two days ago. And then yesterday um, night, in the morning, I believe, yesterday morning during Thursday. I didn't trade today, uh, yesterday morning, um, during the extension, called it one to three, and that was this trade right here. Uh, ended up closing out very early, like just trying to pass. I think it closed around right here um, when price was at this resistance point, and I just took that and ran with it. And um, yeah, so those are the trades that I took to pass, um, as you can see here. So I want to I want to talk about it too as well. I had a couple of days where I kind of got carried away. Uh, this was Wednesday, and I got carried away there. And then on Tuesday, got carried away there. So for me, it's risking the max I can lose is 2%, right? No, yeah, 4%, right? So if I'm risking 1%, the max I can lose is 4%. And this is pretty much these days right here, the max I can lose is 4%. Now, these days, I don't think I was necessarily taking the best setup. So that's why I said I got kind of carried away on top of that. Some of those were scaling entry, stacking and drawdown, out, stuff that I don't recommend doing. Uh, but don't let that don't let it disturb you. You can have a bad day and still pass. Right? And this is the reason why I write down my psychology rules. Stay calm, calm state of mind. Stay in the game, stay calm. You know, stay in the game. Don't get too caught up in the eyes and rules. You can be up five percent and go right back and break even. So don't let it get to you, and you can still pass after that. Look what I did. I was up four percent, got down to two percent, and from two percent. In two days, I went from being down 2% to passing the challenge and making 10% of my account. 
in two days, right? So you don't know how you're going to pass. You just know that if you stick to your rules and you take high probability setups and that you are confident in your ability to, to take high quality setups and structure and et cetera, that you can pass because you are the good trader, right? You being you is enough to pass. You have to, you have to remember that. Your skill set, your level, your rules are enough to pass. That gives you the privilege to pass. So it's not the other way around. A successful trader can pass these challenges. A person who's trying to track these challenges doesn't necessarily be successful. So even if you did pass the challenge, you may you may fail the verification. You may fail, you may not even get a withdrawal when you're live. Why? Because you're not a successful trader. You just get enough to, to, to get past these steps. Maybe you're risking more in high high risk setups. But if you don't have all these rules set, if you don't have a strict plan and regimen and stick to that and give your and let that build and fuel your confidence, then you're gonna have a harder time. So these are my rules. Don't treat trading like you're trying to change your life. Take all that stuff and separate out the market. Just do your one job. Look for setups. Look for high quality setups. Don't bring all that motion. Don't bring, oh, okay, I'm funded. Now I'm going to risk all this amount of money. Risk management. Stay focused. Stay calm. Stay disciplined. You know, it's just like the thing. It's a little mantra. I say PDC. You know, PDC equals consistency. Patience, discipline, and control equals consistency. Be patient. You know, if you're a London session trader and you stick to GJ, only trade GJ. You know, if you are a New York session trader, only trade New York session. Wait for your setups. Wait for your times you're supposed to trade. Have your alarm set. And when you have your alarm set, make sure it says you read your rules before you place your trade. All those things are important. So it's fresh in your brain that, okay, sticking to my rules. As long as I stick to my rules every single day, no matter what the charts tell me today, I don't need to have. I don't need to have a winning day today. Yeah. I don't need Monday to be a profitable day. I just need to be profitable over the course of 30 days. That's what's more important, right? So all those things is more important. Don't let it get to you. As long as you're doing your rules, as long as, I, as long as I'm sticking to these rules right here, these are my rules. As long as I stick to these major rules right here, I'm happy because I know that I'm a successful, profitable trader, and I know I am enough to pass the challenge just being me, just doing what I already do. I should be enough to pass. It's not the other way around. You don't you don't morph yourself to pass. You don't take certain trades or do certain things to pass, right? Because now you're doing something that's not actually you, right? So be yourself. Be calm. Take the setup you take in your normal account. You know, if you were trading a thousand dollar account and you consistently make 30, 40 percent a month, risking one or two percent, or however you do, then do the same things. Have your rule set, you know. Um, and hopefully you guys take everything um, that I said. I'll keep you guys updated. Um, and I feel like I kind of go through everything. I'm um, going to be doing the 50K phase two soon. And my plan on how I'm going to be doing this, I'll show you guys. I'm going to be risking half percent and you know, taking upwards of four trades per day if I want to. If I'm going to be taking four trades per day, though, the max I can lose is 2%. 2% out of a max 5%. So worst case scenario, right? I'm only losing 2% of my account if I lose all my trades that day. And, and that's if I trade both sessions. So that's the type of stuff you're going to be doing now. And you just want to stick to it. And those setups have to be high quality. They have to be high probability. They have to have these rewards. They have to have all my criteria, at least three confluences. If they don't have all these different things, I'm not taking those setups. There may be a Wednesday, I just don't take any trades, you know? So you have to have that in mind. Don't force yourself to trade, take on trades just to pass the challenge. If this is a setup that doesn't make sense, that doesn't have the risk of working parameters to pass, then it doesn't, don't take the trade because you can wait, you know, it could be a Thursday and you didn't take no trades throughout the week and that one Thursday, you catch one of four. You know, you, you, you risk 1%, and you gain 4% of your account. So take your time, man, please take your time. Um, and another thing, key note, on my forex funds, they allow you extensions, which is very, very awesome. So if you're taking the forex, my forex funds challenge, they allow you extensions and they allow you resize. So the extension is important because as long as you don't break the, the violations and rules, let's say you want to get to 4% in the 30 trading days, right? Or the 20 trading days. By the end of the day, you only have 4%. You send them an email and say, hey, I'm up 4% and I haven't broken any rules. They'll give you another account. So take your time, man. Take your time. Don't rush things. They give you, they give you more time. They give you an extra two weeks, or they give you an extra month. They want to see you pass, man. So take your time, man. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so my plan is to get 250K funded right now. I want to just take things slow and try to get funded with a 50K account and then scale my way up to a 250K account. So what I'll be doing is getting 50K funded and then I'll be purchasing a 200K account and then getting that funded and combining them and pretty much just trading the same risk parameters. So if you guys want to take a screenshot of my rules and kind of trade them, if you do trade Tuesday, or you can kind of, you know, mix things up however you want to do it. But this is my rules. So you can kind of screenshot them, look at them, and um, tweak things if you want. Take it, uh, you know. But um, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you guys want to see. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. Like I said, sorry if the audio is bad. Sorry if this is as bad. I just wanted to show you guys the setups. And um, just to show you again, the setups that I took was on DJ. And um, let's just see here. Beautiful and like structure like this is so awesome for passing challenges. Clean market structure, clean confluences. All you have to do is just be patient, wait for your entry, and you're just going to eat. You're going to eat so well in these type of setups. And these are the three trades. Again, risk reward. My smallest risk reward was a one to two. That is important. One to two, smash. This trade was like a one to four, I believe. All trades, smash. Right? And you have this trade as well. This is a one to five trade and this will smash. So these are the three trades that I took. I stick to mainly one pair. In the beginning, I did trade um, gold and US 30, but, and I think I took a G UJ, which is not really um, something that I normally do, but I took two, two couple UJ trades, couple US 30 trades, couple gold trades, some wins, some losses, but nothing too crazy. But for the most part, all you see really is just a lot of GJ. And my recommendation, stick to one pair, do your top down analysis, make sure it's a pair that has volume, has volatility. I recommend GJ. If you're a person who trades London and New York, it does both. So, you know, I, I personally say GJ is a great pair to try to trade and um, take the challenge of verification and get funded off. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and um, yeah.